How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, we're going to be answering some of your guys' questions. I get a lot of emails and a lot of comments and questions about different videos or different topics that we have covered. It's a nice rainy day out today and I thought, what better to do than to tackle some of these questions and uh, give some answers and hopefully it helps a lot of you guys out there to get some of the answers to these questions. So. Let's dive right into it. So we have a question from uh, Tim. He says, hi Jared, I have a question. So it's not good to plug my trailer house cord into my 500 watt inverter just to watch my small 19 inch TV. Thanks, Tim. So this one comes from that video when we talked about inverters and different ways to be able to connect them up and the, the pros and cons to all the things that, that go along with that. So basically what he's asking is, can I, can I put a plug on my inverter that I can just plug my RV into and it just powers everything so I can watch my TV? So uh, you can definitely do that. It's a very simple setup. The only problem that you run into there is we talked about in that video is if your your batteries are powering your inverter, which then powers the converter, which is trying to charge the battery. So it became that, that vicious cycle of just depleting your batteries for no apparent reason. So if you're going to do it that way, like I said, great easy setup is just disconnect your converter or uh, d disconnect it in some way, turn it off so that your inverter is not powering your converter. So um, the, the probability definitely goes up when you do it that way that eventually you're gonna forget to unplug the converter and sometime you're gonna have dead batteries or you're gonna forget to put it back in, your batteries aren't gonna charge when you're assuming they're charging. So. There's just a little bit of room for error when you're doing something that manual, but definitely a very easy way to go. You can do that, just disconnect the converter. So uh, the next question we have is from DW, from the RV surge protection video. Um, he asked, if I need a surge protector to protect my RV, does the fuse box mean nothing? So uh, there's a couple of things that you're being protected from between the surge protector and a circuit breaker. What the circuit breaker is doing is it's going to protect your RV from drawing too much current. That's the, the amperage coming to your RV. So that circuit breaker is going to trip if there's a fault, some kind of short circuit, it's going to trip and, and provide the safety there. But the, one of the big things that it does is say you plug in your 30 amp RV and you're trying to draw more than 30 amps through that wire. So what's going to happen if that, that circuit breaker isn't there and it doesn't trip, then that wire's gonna heat up. It's, it's gonna melt everything around there and it's actually gonna start a fire. It's gonna catch on fire. So um, that circuit breaker is there to help you not pull too much amperage, too much current into your RV. So definitely necessary and it protects you that way. What a surge protector is gonna protect you from is if there's a, a surge in the line for voltage, say like a, a lightning strike in the area. Where that voltage comes surging through the line, it's supposed to remove that surge to protect your RV from that. So they're doing two different things, obviously with the electrical system, but on two different ends of the, the spectrum. So um, I'm probably gonna do another video about protecting your RV electrically because there's so much here that's more than just what's wrapped up into this question because you can also have too high a voltage, too low a voltage. Um, so you might have like an EMS that's gonna shut off the, the power come to your rig if the voltage is too low, which would be bad for your AC. Um, there's the ever controversial auto former or auto transformers that are out there now and the, the new codes that are coming out in 2020. Um, but really that that's a whole different story and uh, we'll get more into depth of that. But Yes, a surge protector and a circuit breaker are both going to be protecting your RV in those two different ways. Our next question comes from Aiden. Can I wire a solar charge controller to the battery while the RV also has integrated charger while hooked up? This trailer also charges using an alternator uh, from the vehicle towing it. Is it safe to have solar and other stuff? So the question is, if I have a converter and solar on at the same time, what's that gonna do to the batteries? Two sources, that sounds bad, or an alternator and solar. So uh, really the way that this is set up with the DC, you can have multiple inputs. It's basically going to be called like a parallel input into your battery being able to charge it. And it's completely normal, completely fine. It's not going to like short circuit and, and fry everything. The one thing that you do want to keep in mind is the charge rate of your battery bank. Battery manufacturers have recommendations on how fast to charge the battery. So like our Battleborn batteries, they say that they can, uh, they can charge at a 1C rate, meaning that it's 100 
amp hour battery so we can charge it at 100 amps per battery. Now they don't recommend it, they say it can handle that, but it's better for the battery if we charge it at a 0.5 charge rate. So uh, that means it's half the capacity. Each battery can take 50 amps to be able to, to charge it up. Now typically on a, lead, a lot of like AGM or lead acid batteries, oftentimes it's going to be at 0.2. So that would be 20% of the capacity. So if you have a 100 amp hour battery, you would be able to charge it at, at 20 amps. So you just wanna look at what your converter's doing, what your solar is doing, and you just don't wanna to charge too much into that battery and uh, just follow the manufacturer recommendation. So I hope that makes sense, but being able to charge with solar and an alternator at the same time is really not a problem. Just don't go over your charging rate for that, that specific battery. Now. Just to clarify a little bit, because we have two Battleborn batteries, um, each being 100 amp hours, we could have 100 uh, amps going into those batteries because it's gonna be divided up. It looks at that as basically one big battery. So basically only 50 amps would be going to each battery. So that's, that's the story there. Here's a question from Barry. Do you have any advice on what to do if your slide won't retract at a campsite? So great question. This does happen and it can be for various reasons. It'd be impossible to try and go through all those. It could be a dead battery, bad hydraulics, uh, bad motor, whatever. There is a way to be able to pull in your slide uh, manually. So I do recommend getting familiar with that system so that you can pull your slide in if you have no power or if you have something wrong with some of the mechanisms. Uh, you want to be able to pull that slide in and not have to try and learn that system when you're out there and your back's up against the wall because you need to get that slide in because you need to go. So if you know that system before this scenario happens, you're gonna be much more prepared and it's not gonna be that big of a deal. So uh, let's move on to the next one. Our next question comes from Travis. Jared, hello and good morning from Maryland. I had a question regarding the cell booster. I checked it out and a lot of people on Amazon said that they just run the wire through the, the gap in the slide. So he's asking if that's the way to do it or should it be permanently mounted? Um, it really, it just comes down to preference. A lot of people will mount them permanently on the RV. It's just easy, you don't have to think about it. If you need it, you don't have to set it up. Um, us, we just, we leave ours down and when we want it, we, we set it up. We already have the wire fished through the walls and uh, to a little access panel on the side. So I just pull that wire out, pop it into the antenna, turn on the unit inside and uh, we're boosting the signal. So it really comes down to preference. Just find what fits your needs. Our next question comes from Mark. Uh, he says, I have an 04 rig. It came with a solar plug and play ICB 21 amp charge controller. So an older system uh, has a 140 watt single solar panel, but it still works. So that's that's great. And I'm considering doing the BMV 700, uh, which is the, the battery monitor from Victron. Um, so his question is, can I use the solar system components I have, or do I need to upgrade the controller as well? If it's working, then that's fantastic. And if you're happy with the performance, uh, it is a little bit older of a controller and uh, I don't know what type of panel it is. You're getting a 140 watt panel there. Uh, but if you're happy with it, there's no problem using it in that system. You don't have to upgrade it if you don't want to. So uh, there might be things out there that are more efficient, but if it's working and it suits your needs, then just stick with it. He goes on to say, I would assume the charge controller will not go directly to the battery post as they do today with a battery monitor. That's correct. With the battery monitor with a shunt, remember everything on the negative side of the battery has to go through the shunt. So disconnect that wire, connect it to the shunt, and that connects to the battery. So uh, that way it can calculate everything in and out of your battery system. Last part of his question, he says, I have a 2000 watt inverter Yamaha generator. However, my old system demanded I ran it for a long time. Uh, does this require me to wire something different, a new schematic in the loop? Does installing solar and monitors affect using my Yamaha generator? Nope. Use the generator as you normally would. This is one of those portable ones. So he plugs into it. Um, no, no problem there. Just use your generator as normal. Next question we have here is from Bill. Is there a way to maintain the batteries during the winter months without pulling them out of the trailer? So uh, there is something you could do if you don't want to leave it plugged in all year, if you're not able to leave it plugged in all year. If you have a single stage converter, I don't recommend leaving it plugged in 
all the time because it's going to boil your batteries, which is, is bad. Uh, but if you wanted to get maybe one of those uh, small little solar panels, I'll put a link down in the description. It's kind of like a, a trickle charger for your batteries that will use uh, the the energy from the sun to be able to, to top off your batteries and whatever it loses and kind of depletes, it's going to put it back during the day. And uh, it's, it's not like you're going to create a massive amount of power to be able to put into your batteries, something that you would use all the time to replenish them. But over the winter, it'll definitely help you to keep those batteries from draining down getting too low and having the, the sulfation build up and then your batteries are dead come springtime. So uh, check the link down in the description to one of those little solar panel trickle chargers. Next question here is from Joe. Could you please address why Blu-ray players don't seem to be available for RVs? I messaged our RV media manufacturer uh, but never received a reply which tells me that it isn't available. So uh, you used to be able to get or you still can get 12 volt TVs and different types of electronics that are 12 volt operated so that way you don't need an inverter in your RV but with the popularity of inverters you can run any TV you want or get a Blu-ray player and just be able to use it off the inverter. Um, I don't see as big of a need out there anymore it might be why it's hard to find or non-existent. Uh, you can use pretty much whatever you want and just have an inverter so you can you can use the devices that that you choose. So I think it's really more of a supply and demand there. Uh, use an inverter and then pick the devices you want. Well, I think that's gonna do it for today. A lot of great questions. You guys ask a lot of great things. Some of these are gonna spur on some some new videos and I'm still going through more, more questions here that uh, I want to be able to help answer so that more people can be informed out there and enjoy the, the RVing process even more. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And uh, if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.